devotional text is Psalm 150. If you would stand for the word of God. Psalm number 150. The book of Psalm, Old Testament, the number is 150. Psalm number 150. When you found it, you discovered these words. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmaments. Praise him in his mighty acts, for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the flute and harp. Praise him with the timbre and dance. Yes, yes, yes. Praise him with the string instruments and flute. Yes. Praise him with the loud cymbals. Praise him with the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath yes. praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Father God, we thank you. God, we praise you. God, we worship you. God, we lift you. We magnify you. Lord, we honor you today, Father God, for you are God. And you are God alone. We come today, Father God, to praise the Lord. We come in your sanctuary to praise the Lord. We come, Father God, to admit that we praise him in the firmaments, the expanse of your power. Lord, we praise you, Father God, for your mighty acts, for what you have done. We praise you, Lord, for what you're going to do. And certainly, Lord, we praise you for what you're doing right now. God, you're great. God, you're excellent. And we praise you for your excellent power and your excellent greatness. God, we praise you. And we come to do it with instruments, Father God. We come to do it with drums and we thank you, Lord. We come to praise you with cymbals, Father God. We come to praise you with piano and we come to praise you, Father God, with good talk. Lord, we come to praise you with our dance. We come to praise you with our voices. We come to praise you with the high sounding symbols. We come to praise you with the loud symbols. Lord, we have breath today. And for that, Lord, we praise you. Lord, we're inhaling and exhaling today. For that, God, we honor you. We come, Father God, to lift you before men. We come to magnify you, Father. We come to make you big before others. God, we honor you for you are God. We praise you for you are God alone. Lord, we say hallowed to your name, for your name is, is worthy of all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Lord, we honor you, Father God, for you are just God. And now, Lord, we come to the house of God. We've come to the house of praise. We've come to the house of prayer. We've come to the house of giving unto you. And Lord, we ask you to forget about Bless us to forget about ourselves. Bless us to forget about our issues. Release us, Father God, that we will release, release ourselves to honor you. Lord, bless your word. Bless your word, Father God, to fall on good soul. Bless your word, Father God, that lives will be changed. Bless your word, Father God, that the Holy Spirit will speak to us and speak through us. Lord, I ask you to rescue me from me. Hide me behind the Holy Spirit. That he will stand, preach, and teach your word. Lord, that we will be better at 12 o'clock than we were at 10 o'clock. That we will run and 
tell men, women, boys, and girls about this Jesus who keeps us. About this Jesus who saves us. About this Jesus who makes us who we are. And Lord, we thank you today. Have your way, Lord. Have your way in this place, Father God. Have your way, Lord. Do what you have chosen to do, Lord. And bless us to be obedient to your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we thank you for the victory. We thank you for the victory of honoring you. We thank you for the victory of praising you. And we thank you for the victory of being in your presence, Lord. Now, Lord, we thank you. And we bless you. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And we ask it all. Amen and thank God.
God has filled our hearts. And he's, has he filled your heart? Yeah. Our hearts, ultimately, our hearts are filled with praises unto him. God has allowed us another chance. Another chance to get it right. He's given us another chance to, to worship him. He's given us another chance to speak for him. God has given us another chance. And for that, I'm thankful. I thank God for another chance. If you're like me, you burned up your second chance. Right around the, the, the age of two months, I burned up my second chance. Thank God for another chance. Thank God for one more chance. Hallelujah. Let me call your attention to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verses 22 through 25. Colossians chapter 3, verses 22 and 25. Thank you to our musicians, too for uh, elevating the worship. Colossians chapter 3, verses 22 through 25 in the New Testament, the book is Colossians. The chapter is 3, the verses are 22, 23, 24, and 25. You found that you will discover these words. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily to the Lord and not to men knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. For you, for, you, for you serve the Lord Christ. But he who does wrong will be repaid for the wrong right. which he has done. Yes, Lord. And there is no partiality. I want to talk about honoring and trusting God. Honoring and trusting God. We have been going through our faith five, which is our core values. And our core values of our church end with the fact that we ought to honor and trust God. Yes, we ought to honor and we ought to trust God because number one, he is God. Yes. Number two, he has always been God. Mm -hmm. And number three, he will always be God. So as we seek to close out our core values of instructions and our beliefs that we believe here on planet Earth at the New Beginning Church, we want to make sure that we understand without beyond a shadow of a doubt that we must honor God. Yes, yes. We must have faith in him. We must trust him. We must make sure that we put our hope in him because God is God. Yes. No man can really explain God. We just go through theological exercises to try to make sure we understand who God is. Yes, sir. God has a way of revealing himself to mankind in nature. Mm -hmm. He reveals himself through speech. He reveals himself through activity. And the Hebrew writer says he has revealed himself even through his son. Therefore, today, he reveals himself to us through his word, the word that is written about his son. All right. When you look at the Old Testament, it leads up to Jesus. When you look at the New Testament, it is all about Jesus. And when you look at Revelation, it is about Jesus yet to come. Yes. 
So we must understand if we're going to be obedient to anything or anybody, it is because we trust and we honor God himself. Yes, we must trust him. Yes, we must honor him. Yes, we must have faith in him in order to be all that God has called us to be. Colossians, the book of Colossians written by the Apostle Paul, the book of Colossians says real clearly that we ought to have a holy family. Mm -hmm. Begins in verse number 18 and the pericope ends in verse number 21 and he talks about wives submitting to their own husbands. Mm -hmm. He talks about it being fitting in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then he says husbands ought to love their wives and do not be bitter toward them. It's a sensational thing here in the fact that women have to respect men and then men have to love women. If you ever want to make a man mad, think, make him think or have him to think or allow him to think that he's being disrespected. If you want to let a tiger out, if you want to let a lion out of a man, just make him think that he's being disrespected. The text declares that the women ought to respect, or this word submit means to come up under their own husband. Then when, it, when you look at verse number 19, you find out that husbands ought to love their wives and Ephesians says you ought to love your wife as Christ loves the church. It says to us today that if you choose not to love your wife, then you're going to create some bitterness in the household. How many of you know that every time she fuss, she ain't fussing about what she really telling you about? Every time she raises her voice, every time she shuts down, you can't really describe or you can't ever really figure out what she's really angry about. It's because of love. We have to show love. We have to. Now, for some women, flowers show love. For other women, it's just a, de a dying desertation, and she'd rather not deal with it. So we have to show love. We have to get to a point in our lives. Ephesians says that we ought to love them as Christ loved the church unconditionally. It says to the children, verse number 20, it says, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. It says, obey them in all things. When you trust God and you walk in faith with God, even when it doesn't look right, you depend on what God has said in his word. I know there are some, some families that are that are all drummed up. I know there are some dysfunctional families where the, where the parents don't know which way is up. And I'm the first one to admit, some folk don't need you. <laughs> Some people, some people don't, don't need to be around children. So, some people don't need to be even involved with children. It says to children, obey your parents in all things, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Verse 21 says, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath. Do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. It is the responsibility of every father to make sure that he encourages his child. It is the responsibility of every father to not just drop a seed, but to help that seed grow. It is the responsibility of every father to make sure that he applies the right kind of pressure to encourage a child to move just a little bit further. Yes, Lord. You see, the good thing about it is, you know how much pressure your child can handle. Yes. You know how much discipline to put there. Mm. The police officer doesn't know. <laughs> it is evident that they don't know because they are abusive with their attacks. 
We need to understand if the child is going to learn how to how to respect authority, he's going to learn it from the household. That's right. Then Paul moves from the household to our spiritual lives. Mm. He involves here both sanctification and the local church. Mm. He says servants. This word servant is slave. During Paul's days, slavery was present. And if you are living today and you're not a slave unto the Lord, you are a slave unto the devil. Yes, you, you are a slave to something because you something controls you. Something unctions you to do what you do. So it says servants obey in all things your master according to the flesh. So he identifies that these are masters who have control of you by way of your flesh. Someone who have, have, to, have, have control over you, someone who is above you, you ought to obey them. That's right. And we ought not wait until we realize that we, our paycheck is coming if we obey them. You see, folk at, folk at work will obey their supervisors. Mm -hmm. They will even call them boss, and they, they will even lick up to them. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the local church, <laughs> we got issues because our paycheck is not tied to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as we go on today, I want to show you that there is a payday. Yes. It is more important, it is more valuable, it is more in amount than even your paycheck that you get on planet Earth. That's right. He says, servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. And he says, when you obey them, don't obey them with eye service. Uh -huh. he, says, he, says, he says to us today that, that just because they can see you, don't obey them. He brings in a level of integrity, and he tells us that we must have integrity, and integrity is when what we doing, we do it, and the way we do it, and the motive by which we do it, we do it that way even when no one is looking. That's right. That's right. The problem is we, we run and we jump to things when somebody is looking. But Paul says in Colossians chapter 3, verse number 22, he says to us, do not do this service that you serve with. Do not do it as if you're doing eye service, as men please us. There's one thing about some people, they're going to please the man that they can see. Some people are going to jump on board to, to please those who can see them, and they go out of their way to make sure they're seen. And if you don't see me, I'm going to tell you about it. I'm going to make sure I run and tell you, man, I did this today, I did this today, I did this today. The text declares, don't do that, and don't do it as I please us, and don't do it as men please. Because God, God is looking. Mm -hmm. And God sees all, even if you don't have to tell somebody you did what you've done. That's right. Jesus says it like this in Matthew chapter 6. Jesus says, don't bear arms and then tell folk about it. Mm -hmm. In other words, don't do a good thing and then run and tell people how well you did it. Right. Right. Jesus says to us this morning, don't spend your time to your own home. No, don't, don't spend your time. No, don't spend your time. Man, I did this today. I did this today. And I did this today. And matter of fact, I worked this at the house. And I did this for my church. The text declares, don't be concerned about our service. And don't be concerned about being a man pleaser. He says, but be sincere in your heart. Do it with the right motive. Do it with the right attitude. And do it with the right conduct. Paul says to us today, do it in the fear of God. 
This word fear, this word fear simply means that we ought to do it because we respect God. Do it singularly. Do it with sincerity. Make sure you do it with the, with the right mentality. So why did you do that today? Why did you do what you did? Why did you say what you said? It's all right to say it and to do good deeds, but whatever you do, don't broadcast it. <laughs> do it with simplicity. Don't get all complicated with it. Do it with generosity. Be generous about it. Look for somebody you can bless. Don't be self-seeking. Nor should you be self-serving. Nor should you be boastful. Says to us today, but do it as we fear the Lord. Do it as if this word, this word fear means to be frightened. This word fear means to be alarmed. This word fear also means, means to be alarmed, but it also means to reverence God. So why do I do what I do? Because I give all my honor and my glory to God. Right. Always do what you do because you are reveling and respecting. You are relevant, relevant to God. And you respect him. And you ought to reverence God. You ought to always look forward to pleasing God, not man. Amen. Too often, too often, we, we carry ourselves in a way where we want to be men pleasers and we're more concerned about pleasing man than pleasing God. But don't you know that God doesn't have to make a list and God doesn't have to check it twice. The God we serve is an omnipresent God. He is the God that's all places at the same time. Everywhere God goes, he bumps into himself. You see, God can be in the east and bump into himself in the west. Because he's omnipresent. He's every place at the same time. He's in your thoughts. He's in your heart. He knows your motives. So whatever you do, in the flesh, whatever you do in your heart, whatever you do to serve others, do it to the glory of God. Verse number 23 says, and so whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. He talks about not being a man pleaser, and then he says, whatever you do, you focus on God and not on man. Oh, they taught us that real well. Brother Miles, they taught us that real well. I don't know how they did in Louisiana, but in Mississippi, they taught us that real well. We had about six acres of property. Our church sits somewhat in the middle of it. And every Saturday, like, like clockwork, we would go out there three and a half miles from Indianola, Mississippi. We would go out there and use a point. We didn't know what a riding lawnmower was, Braylon. We pushed it. And we pushed it. We didn't have a weed either, so we had to cut the edges with a hole. I know what you're talking about. We cut that six acres every Saturday and got no pay for it. Didn't even tell the pastor we cut. Didn't even broadcast to the deacons that it was done. We knew what our jobs were every Saturday. We, we hated to see Marge show up. Because we knew when the month of March showed up, regardless of how much time we had to spend on the baseball diamond, we had to go to the church first and mow the yard. We didn't leave grass shavings everywhere. We had to sweep it up and clean it up. We didn't have a blower like we have now. We had to sweep every shred of grass up. And we had to do it with the right attitude. We wouldn't dare come home and say, Mama, they didn't pay me anything. And, and, and she would look at us like, what? We work for the Lord. And we work with the right attitude for the Lord. And we gave God the glory. And the biggest reward that we receive is when the church members showed up on Sunday morning and they walked upon a manicured lawn. That was our reward. Our reward. And they didn't even talk about it. 
who did it. They didn't talk about how it got done. They would, matter of fact, they were passed by. It was a, it's, it's on Highway 49. They were passed by Highway 49 and blow at us and keep going. It's because we had to do it unto the Lord. And one thing I do know, even though they didn't pay me then, <laughs> I got a reward in them. Every God, the God we serve, he's watching us. He's watching everything we do. He knows the time we show up. You see, God has relieved me of some things. He, I don't have to take notes of what time people show up. I don't have to write down whether they, they got their shirt tails tucked in or their tie on. I don't have to, I don't have to document whether they have the right attitude in their meetings or not. I don't have to worry about confronting them about cussing when God confronts you. That's right. He knows how to do it. That's right. The text, the text declares we ought to do it as unto the Lord. We ought to do it heartily. We ought to do it with excitement. We ought to do it with joy. The opposite of this word heartily, it means to be grudging, to hate to do it, to have an attitude about doing it. And that, that pastor, that I'm sick and tired of him asking me to do something. Every time I look up, he got something for us to do. Let me tell you, sister, let me tell you, brother, leave it alone. Because God wants us to do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto me. Right. Let me just share with you. Let me share with you, um, you don't do it for me. You do it to the Lord. You do it unto the Lord. We are doing it to honor God. Whatever we do, we are doing it to honor God. Somebody's saying right now, well, preacher, I don't do anything. And I'm saying, you're right. You said, you said, but this is not applied. This is not applied to me because I don't do anything, preacher. So I don't have to do it begrudgingly because I don't do anything. And I sit back and I said, right. Then some people are saying, well, no one told me to do it. Some people are saying, that's not my job. Some people are saying, I didn't put it down there. So now we have grown folk who act like little children. They tell me, they tell me, they, now they tell me that they tell me that in some household they get into an argument at night. Well, it's not my turn to wash dishes. That didn't happen in the David's household. <laughs> that is not, it's not my time to, to sweep and mop the floor. We didn't have that privilege in the David's household. We had three boys before we had any girl, so we learned to mop, to sweep, we, we, we learned to, to wash clothes, we learned to wash dishes, and even when we were too short to stand at the dish, at the, at the bowl, at the, at the bowl to wash dishes, we daddy built a wooden crate. We didn't have the crates y'all have now. We built a wooden crate to make sure we didn't have an excuse. And when mama got home, Everything in the house, every single day, had to smell like pine saw and purets. Spotless, clean. That's right. And we had to do it as unto the Lord. We had to do it with excitement. We had to do it with joy. We had to have the right motive because we realized that if we didn't do it with the right motive, we wouldn't get a reward, but we would get a deward. That's the word I just made up. Maybe I should call Webster and Google and tell him, put this one there. We didn't get a reward. We didn't get an, an award. We got a deward. And let me tell you, if you live in the country, you don't want a D-war. I know that's right. You, you, we didn't have a telephone, so 911 wasn't something that you could call. And when you got to school, you couldn't tell the teacher that you got beat because guess what? The teachers began to beat on you too. And you couldn't tell mom and daddy that the teacher beat you because when you got home, they said, what did you do? Now I lay across the bed, I lay on the floor. And Braylon, when they asked you, when they told you to lay on the bed, they were giving you some, some grace. 
Because when you lay on the bed, you can tuck it in just a little bit while they're swinging. But when they say lay on the floor, it ain't gonna give at all. <laughs> they just wearing it out, Brother God. I mean, lay, and then you better not try to hold the belt or you better not try to run. You just add to it. But it's because we had respect. It's because we knew that we had to be the servants of that household and we did it with joy. Here I am today, 58 years old. Mama comes to the house and tells me to turn the TV back on like it's her house. I turned it off because no one was listening and I don't want to waste a dime. I turned it off because no one was listening. She looks around when it gets quiet in the house and says, who turned that, who turned that TV off? And my wife snitches on me every time. He did. Don't even call my name. She said, he did. She said, turn that TV back on. I don't say a word. So some words, I don't say a word. I, 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 the TV that I pay for. The TV that's in my house. The remote, I use the remote that I pay for. I use the remote that, that I put the batteries in. She's 600 miles away when I bought that TV. But she said, turn it on. And guess what? I turned it back on, Danielle. Right. Right. Ask me what I said. I can tell you just like Jesus on his way to Calvary. I said not a mumbling word. Right. Oh, that's right. No, don't say nothing. Okay. And I got out alive. Because I said not a mumbling word. Children these days telling parents where to go. Telling parents what they will and will not do. Mama and daddy used to say they were raised in the wrong house. <laughs> they were raised in by the wrong family. We would go to the go to the store once a week. We'd go uptown. We'd go uptown out of the country. Once a week we would we would all pack in the car and, and, and we would ride for nine miles to town. And every time we went to town, there was some little boy that threw the food in the marketplace. He would lay on the floor. He would kick and scream. He would just throw the food and dare to act like I was doing. Don't you dare try. I brought you into this world. I got a whole sermon to you doing that. And those were his words. If you drop on that floor, I'm going to get down there with you. And even as grown men, when our parents got to be frail, we still have that respect for them. We don't talk to him in any kind of way. We, we do it as unto the Lord. Verse 24 says, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. Knowing, you got to know it for sure. You, you got to know, you got to perceive it, you have to have an understanding. And some rules of the house, some rules of the church can go without being written down can go without being said. I just knew I couldn't try my daddy the way they tried their daddy down the street. I just knew, I, I just knew it. I, 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 didn't have, I didn't need, I didn't need a, a seminar. I didn't need a manual. I just knew it. I just knew that I had to, I had to do it unto the Lord because I had a reward. The problem is, People in the church want to be rewarded for every little thing. And I know it's been said by me several times. It's been said about me several times. Well, Pastor Davis, he's not here anymore. He, but Pastor Davis is not one that's going to run you down to thank you. Well, if I give you a reward, you have your reward. The question becomes, do you want your reward for me or do you want your reward for God? Or from God? Because when God gives it, it's way better than what I can do. He says that we have an inheritance. We have a reward. And we need to know, we need to understand that we have an inheritance that no man can give us. Your paycheck is not big enough to compare to this reward. God has a way of blessing us in spite of us. And he always gives us more than we deserve. How many of you deserve to wake up this morning? Raise your hand and holler and scream for me. How many of you deserve to be able to plant one foot in front of the other? 
How many of you deserve to be able to inhale and exhale? How many of you deserve to have a heart in the center of your chest, favored on the left side, that pumps blood to every extremity of your body? Let me tell you, God has blessed us. And he's blessed us regardless of us. And it's not because we've been so good. It's not and it's showing because we've been on time. What if God judge you about your, about your punctuality? What if he bless you because of your punctuality? What would you be? What would your blessings look like? Your head would look like mine. If God bless your hair, I'm talking about even bald hair. If God bless your hair based on your punctuality, Based on, how, based on how you give glory to God, based on how you honor him, and based on how you sincerely uh, accommodate God. We're trying to accommodate men. Because, see, we won't be late for, for our jobs. We won't talk back to our boss. But it's nothing to talk back to the pastor. Nothing to talk. Nothing to be late for church. It's nothing to be irresponsible and, and, and not responsive. On your job, they got a manual, and in that manual, they tell you what to do, how to do it, and how often to do it. And guess what we do? We do it the same way they said do it. And if they, we don't do it the same way, they give us a warning. If we, we refuse to do it the same way the next time, they give us another warning, and they write us up. After they write us up, and we don't do it the same way the next time, then what they do, they dismiss us. If we did that at the church house, if we operated that way at the church house, people would say that no good in pastor, that no good in God is always doing us wrong. And when they tell the story, they will never but tell the story of what they have done. We need to make sure, we need to make very sure, we need to make very sure that we honor God by doing it God's way. We have to honor God by doing it God's way. It says, for, for you serve the Lord Christ. We serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and we have to do it God's way simply because God has a way of getting things done that we don't even know of. I want to say to you, even though you can't see God working, he is working behind the scene and you can't see it. God is the one that's arranging your future. He's the one that's putting you before people. He's the one that's blessing life for you to happen the way it's happening. God is the one who blesses you. And because God blesses us, because God keeps us, we ought to honor him, we ought to praise him, we ought to glorify him. But he is, he is God. So we have an inheritance. We have a reward. We, when we do things God's way, when we do things the way that God has instructed us to do it, when we have the right attitude, when, when we right, have the right motive, and when we have the right conduct, God blesses us. I told you last week, I told you last week that as you give, God gives more. As you serve, God serves more. And when you serve, you are to serve to the glory of God. What would it be like if I fed my next door neighbor when they were hungry? And my next door neighbor heard it down the street that I told the guy down the street that I fed them. What would it be like if I gave clothes to the naked? And then everywhere I went, I had to pump my chest and tell people how I clothed the naked. How I fed the hungry. What would it be like if I, I didn't have to go overseas to do missions, but I do missions right around here. What would it be like that every time I did missions, I had to call somebody and say, I did this great thing today. Mm -hmm. When you do that, the text declares that you cut off your blessings. That's right. That your blessings that you would get in heaven. The blessings that you would get in your, in your inheritance. The blessings that you will get in your possessions that God is willing to possess you with will be no more. Because you don't need two blessings, right? You don't need man to bless you. Then God to bless you. I want to wait on God. I want to work while it's day and I want to have the right motives. I want to make sure I have the right conduct. I want to make sure I have the right attitude to bless the Lord. 
You know, we are servants. We are servants. We are, we are even slaves unto the Lord. Yeah. And the reason why we are servants or slaves unto the Lord is because God has blessed us. Without God, we are nothing. Without God, nothing takes place. Without God, we cannot be anything but just dust, not even good dirt. That's why at the end of the day, at the end of our lives, the preacher goes down to the dirt. And he stands over the dirt. And he says, my brothers and sisters, we have come as earthly far as we possibly can come. We have come with this, my brother, or this, my sister, all the way we can, we can come. Now it becomes my responsibility to commit this body back to the dust, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and earth to earth. Looking forward to the general resurrection when Jesus Christ cracks the sky and the dead in Christ shall rise first and those of us who remain shall be caught up with him in men text says, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse, verse number 18 says it like this. We will forever be with the Lord. And he says, comfort one another with these words. Finally, he says in verse number 25, Colossians chapter 3, verse 25, he says to us, but he who does wrong will be repaid for the wrong which he has done. God has no partiality. God has no favoritism. If you do well, if you do good, God blesses you with what you've done well and what you've done good. If you do wrong, God blesses you or curse you with the wrong and you receive the wrong that you have done. He says, God has no partiality. God has no favoritism. I know we think that we are God's favorite, and, and, and we are, we, we say, but when it comes to rewarding you, when it comes to blessing you, when it comes to paying you for what you have done, God has no favoritism. One of the worst things that a, a family can do is have favoritism in the household. That's right, that's right. One child over another child. Now, I'll be, I'll be the first to admit, I'll be the first to admit that sometimes children do crazy stuff where, where they can't get rewarded. But then on the other hand, parents have to have no partiality and no favoritism. The God we serve is a fair God. The God we serve has no favoritism. The God we serve is a God who watches over us and he keeps us and he has no special people. Brother Miles, can you go back there? He has no special in the foyer. He has no special people. He has no favoritism. He is God of the good and God of the bad. He has no favoritism. He walks with us. He keeps us. He blesses us. And when he keeps us and blesses us, he does it fairly. That's right. He does it fairly. He does it fairly. So you can moan and groan and talk about this is what, this is not what happened and this is what was done if you want to. At the end of the day, you need to understand that God is fair. That's right. That's right. We have to be faithful because he's fair. Yeah. Matter of fact, he's more than fair. He gives to us when we don't deserve it <laughs> because he is the almighty God. Yeah. And I thank God today yeah. that he blesses us in spite of us, yeah. in spite of our meanness, in spite of our crucialities, in spite of our misstep. God keeps right on blessing us yeah. in spite of us. Thank you, Lord. Yes, he does. Thank you, Lord. We don't deserve to be here. 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 But God has given us favor and brought us through here one more time. He keeps on giving us favor. Yes. And, and the word partiality means that we are no better than anybody else. That's right. <laughs> he, says, he, says, he says that God doesn't consider us any better than everybody, anybody else. And that's why when we get saved, when we're born again, we need to understand that God has been patient with us. Yes. God has kept us. Yes. 
God has blessed us. And while you were doing your thing, while you were doing it your way, God was patient with you. And therefore, we have to be patient with us. Says, says to us today, we need to honor God. We need to trust God. We need to bless God. And when we honor God, when we trust God, we walk in faith with God. Even though, even though slavery has never been a good thing, the Apostle Paul does not get involved and become a social activist. He just tells us what to do. And when we walk with mankind, he tells us to make sure we honor those who have leadership over us because that way is the way of honoring God. Yeah, yeah. But you know, in order for you to see it, in order for you to act right, in order for you to be obedient to this text, you got to walk in faith. You can't see it right now. It's, it has not appeared to you right now. But let me tell you, you need to understand that God is watching. All night and all day. God is watching us. He, he's keeping us. And he knows when we're right. He knows when we're wrong. He knows when we're going to say something crazy. God is watching us. We can do it. We can live right. We can have the right motives. We can have the right conduct. We can have the right attitude. Because God fixed it over 2,000 years ago. He took his son, Jesus the Christ, and, and he took your attitude. He took my attitude. He took your motive, and he died on the Scar Hill called Calvary. Yeah, yeah. He died for you, and he died for me. He took up the cross. He, yeah. They nailed him tight. They nailed him tight. Yeah, yeah. They riveted his feet. They killed him. An innocent man died for the guilty over 2,000 years ago on a Scar Hill called Calvary. He died for you and he died for me. They took him and they planted him in the ground. They, they put him in a barber tomb. They, they killed my Lord and your God. They put him in a barber tomb. But early that Thursday morning, he rose with all power. He rose with all power in heaven and earth, man. Early that third day morning, he got up. He got up, and he got up, and because he got up, we can get up. We don't have to keep living the way we live. We can honor God. We can trust God. We can praise God. But those of you who never confessed Christ as your Savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. You can get to know him. You need to know Jesus. Hell was made for somebody. It's my responsibility as the preacher of the church to tell you you don't have to go to hell. You can go to heaven when you die. And the only way to make it to heaven is bless the name of Jesus. Believe the story that over 2,000 years ago, he died on a skull hill called Calvary. Believe the story that over 2,000 years ago, they laid him in a bottom tomb for you and for me. Believe the story that out of that third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. That same Jesus that died, he was buried, he rose. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, he was seen by over 500 men at one time. If you never trusted him, this is your moment. Will you come to Jesus? The door is open. Will you come? We offer Christ to you. The door is open. Oh, my sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He will give you a brand new life. New life. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on, Christ. If you can believe this story that Jesus died, he was buried in the barber tomb. 
And earlier that Thursday morning, he rose from the dead. He can be saved right here, right now. If you would, just bow your head to me, with me, bow your heads with me, and invite him in. Repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you pray this prayer, you are saved, you're born again. When you die, you're on your way to heaven. We believe that nothing can stop you from the doors of heaven. But there may be others here who, who are either listening or present, who struggle with sin like the rest of us in this room do. The rest of us struggle. The person next to you struggle. The person in front of you struggle. The person behind you struggle. If you're struggling with sin, would you bow your head with me and allow me to pray with you and pray for me? Lord Jesus, we come now to recommit, to refocus, to rededicate. We come, Father God, asking you to forgive us. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for falling short. For, forgive us for sins of omission. Forgive us for sin of commission. Bless us to walk with you, Father God. Bless us, Father God, to commit with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others who are in between churches. I don't have a church home. I offer to you the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the king, where Jesus is the captain. If you want to join the New Beginning Church, you can do this in present, or you can do it online by inboxing me and letting me know that you want to be a member of the New Beginning Church. This is a church that honors God, the southeast side of Houston. We praise God for what he is doing. Thank you so much for joining us here at the New Beginning Church. We're at 4251 Shearmire Road, Houston, Texas, 77048. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. God keep you. It is now offering time. It is now offering time. It is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord. It is time to give to the Lord. It is time to give to the Lord. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, Please raise your hand up real high, and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand, and you will be served. If you're listening uh, by online, you can uh, give your offering by mailing it in to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77. Four, five, nine. Or you can send your money electronically by way of Zelle. The Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Yes, Lord. Hello. 
so I can read it. How about that? Write it so I can read it and I give you a call just to see how you enjoy the service and see how we can pray with you and pray for you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for visiting, visiting the new beginning. The new beginning. So. service. We enjoyed having you on this broadcast. And please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to join us. To continue to join us for our Sunday school at 9 a.m. every Sunday. Our Sunday school at 9 a.m. every Sunday. Also, continue to join us as you have done today in our 10.30 a.m. service. We'd be glad to have you with us at 10.30 a.m. every Sunday. And you can join us on Facebook Live every Wednesday. Also, every Wednesday on our broadcast Wednesday uh, for Bible study at 7.15 p.m. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you for being a part of our service today.